Okay, guys. Uh, we're going to talk about Harden tonight. Sixers at home. Uh, they take on the Knicks. Bob Ryan, I made the prediction that with Harden back, I think the Sixers are going to be in the finals. Uh, what do you think about what you've seen so far? And what do you think about tonight? If you, uh, the, uh, the Dixville not sampling we've had of two games is terrifying for the rest of the league. If, if this is going to be maintained. Now, they didn't play. They played the Timberwolves and they played the Knicks. And the Knicks are right now there you go. A, yeah. a disgrace. Yes. So you can't fully judge. But the predictions about the, the, the pairing of Embiid and Harden and what that might entail in the first two games is, is a Daryl Morey wet dream. It's all coming to true. Do you realize that uh, Embiid is averaging 34 points a game? in the two games they played. He's, he, he shot 27 free throws in the second game, uh, and I'm sure that most of them are the recipients of passes from Harden. Harden had 16 assists in, in that game. And just think if they did that, what they should do with assists, which is if you throw an assist to a guy who makes a free throw, uh, that should be an assist. They should go by halves if they have. They've only makes one. I mean that. I've been saying that for 40 years. Because, you know, why should you be cheated when a guy misses a layup if you give him a great pass? Anyway, Harden has been spectacular. He's, uh, he had a triple-double with not, not no news. Uh, he's been great. And, guys, and the pilot fish, known as Mr. Tyrese Maxey. It's been good. Is, is scored 28 and 21 yeah. in those two games. And, and, and there was a lot of legitimate speculations about, about whether he would benefit and how much he would benefit based on the first two games. So, so far in the early returns, very, very early against a, a so-so team and a horseshit team, it, the results have been fantastic. Well, Jeff, yeah, we, knew listen. The, we knew the guy had it in him if he just chose to do it. Well, but like, oh, that's I just don't know if he can sustain it. Again, can he stay healthy for yeah. a – two month run in the playoffs. Like that's my bigger thing is you've got Joel Embiid who knock on wood has been healthy for a while now. And James Harden, who again, his body looks like he's my age and I'm 50 by the way. All right. His body, I might have a better body than James Harden at 50 years old for somebody who never works out or rarely works. Got a better step back. You got to concede that. He does. He does. Okay. No, all right. All right. no Give question. No Give question. Okay. But, but I, I feel like, I don't know how much you can count on him, Gary. That's the question I have is like, okay, in the East, my, my biggest thing is who can you count on that's going to show up every day, that's going to be healthy, that's going to perform? Don't we know the answer to that? Giannis. Giannis. No. That's who we can count on, right? We, we, we know what Giannis is going to bring every single night. We know he's probably going to be healthy for the most part. I mean, he played through it in their championship run, right? He played through injuries there. I feel like with Philly, we don't know. With Brooklyn, we certainly don't know with KD's injury history. Kyrie, listen, Kyrie, even if he gets back on the court full time, you know, I've had numerous people tell me he's got old man knees for years. He's had shoulder. He's had, I forget what it was that he missed the Celtics playoff run and didn't even show up for the game. Didn't he have like a, a toothache or something, and he had to have surgery, and he couldn't couldn't even show up to support his teammates. Right. Uh, so I just feel like, to me, it's about reliability right now and knowing what you're going to get, and that's why I'm going to stick with the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, I I, I would I, I'm going to uh, you know uh, Mr. Echo on on the fact that if you put that proverbial luger to my head. If they were starting it all tonight, I would pick the Bucks. Okay, but that doesn't mean that I would discount the chances of the Sixers or the or the Heat, frankly. Well, and, and you want to see what they look like when it matters. Of course. Well, that but isn't that always the case? I mean, that I mean, so of often it's the case. You could go back and trace the Celtics in the '60s and 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 the years that guys, you know, they benefited. And in one championship, they lost in '58 because Russell got hurt. And and you know, but, but was, we haven't seen these teams, Bob. That the difference is. That team, like you knew what you were going to get with all these other teams. Brooklyn, we haven't seen them all year. Oh, no, no. We haven't seen them with Ben yet, and we're, we're coming down the stretch drive. And with Philly, again, we've seen them for two games so far coming down the stretch drive, and it's two guys who have a major, major injury sure. history, especially right. with Embiid. That's true. And then and now chicken head down the other on the West, we got an injury uh, with the Chris Paul. We'll get to that. But, but, um, all kidding aside, aren't they absolutely better off making sure they're on the road in the playoffs? Well, yeah. I, sure. well, I mean, sure. right. and they will be, right? If they make it, that you would think every series they should not be the home team. 
which they're going to like. Right. Right. No, if, if they have a choice. Now this, oh, this just bothers me. Yeah, it just does. You know, it just bothers me. And, and because I, I, I it, there's a possibility of shenanigans. I, I, I just, if I, I don't like it, it's, it's bizarre, you know, and, and of course that brings us back to why it is. And, and, and this, perplexing individual you know well I, I i'm not a big karma guy but in this case i am because it fits my argument i think brooklyn's done i mean maybe simmons can help him out but as far as Kyrie's concerned i, I just think there's too much bad there's too much negativity in the air with him whether he's home or on the road yeah. and oh. you know I, I and you're right bob it is a shame but i gotta tell you man at the beginning of the year i thought it was brooklyn and the lakers and i don't think those two are those two teams are not oh, factors well, at all. That, 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 yeah, brooklyn's right there with them well, you because you, you're right. You you haven't seen Ben Simmons yet. We haven't seen him all year. Kyrie, you have no idea what to expect with him mentally. KD, you have no idea what to expect physically. Those are three wild cards of which are they all going to line up when it matters most? I say no. I agree. You know, that's why I don't I don't think it's going to be a factor with Brooklyn, whether it's home. I, I mean, you're right. Bob's right. They're going to try to lose or whatever. They want to fix it so they can be playing the road. I don't think it's going to be enough for them. That's my point. But um, real quick, because I do want to get to John Morant, but Bob touched on it real quick on the Suns. You know, they're still six and a half up with the best record. Yeah. I mean, can they maintain this, Bob? They have a cushion. They, you know, going, they, they might not. They've lost two in a row since he went down. Right, right. <laughs> and and uh, they've lost two in a row since he went down. And, and, and no, right, that's two. It's no big deal. It's not push the panic button. But also, they don't have pain. And, you know, I, I, if they had Cameron Payne, I don't know how right. far away he is, but, you know, they don't have a, a, a point guard, to, a, a backup to, of some reliability no. either. So there's a lot of, you know, pressure on on, on Booker and, and Bridges and, you know, et cetera. Um, I don't know. I don't like, you know, I'd be a little worried. I mean, but I'm not going to panic yet, but they do have the cushion. Yeah, it's a nice cushion. It's uh, thank God they had it. But they're going to, no, we could maybe safely say they're going to need it. If they're going to hold on yeah. and be the number one in the West. Well, you I mean, want the home court. You want the home court when it matters, if you get to like the NBA finals, right? It probably doesn't matter much early, it, you know, to me, whether you're going to play the eight or the seven, I, yeah. I don't know how much that's going to matter, but when it gets down to an NBA finals, you're going to want the home court event. Yeah. You're going to want it. So well, it's going to uh, that. And you know, once again, how many times Chris Paul, he's still over for career and, and injuries always got, hurt. Got always hurt. And, and you know, this one is thumb. Right. You know, I don't know how he did it, how, how he dislocated, I don't know exactly how he did it, but he, it's his thumb on his shooting hand, unfortunately, you know, and uh, yeah, I and six to eight. Oh, my God, that, that's the playoffs time. You know, so, yeah, um, there's, there's a, that's open the door uh, for the down the road. We'll see how they fare in the short run here. I, uh, you know, but the first two games were not encouraging. All right. John Moran lighting it up. Oh, my God. I mean, just, you know, I. I thought of Allen Iverson. I'm thinking of Pete Maravich. These are the type of visions that I'm having. Um, well, I mean, I don't know, Bob. Do you think he's AI? Or just Pete? stick with just stick with uh, guards for a minute. I mean, you know, point guards, that, uh, si- guys that size. Pete was six five, and Pete was just so generous. There's never been anything before or since that that was the complete package that Pete yep. Maravich was. Okay, which includes playing for the father, four and 44 points a game in college, and allowed to do anything he wanted to do, you know, kind of thing. All right. That's a whole different matter. AI is the model. It is AI. It, it, this is the, and, and we, it will op- reopen us, uh, force us to re-examine his career again, and some of the things he did, including dragging a team that you couldn't name two other guys on the team to a finals once. Anyway, uh, I never, but, but I have to give him his due. That's the guy we, we want to, uh, that's the frame of reference to me. What we are seeing, folks, he is the best show in basketball. And we got some good ones. You know, I mean, Doncic is a show, you know. You're Jokic different. is a show. Right. But this this is the best show. And what he put on the other night, I only wish, I got to go check that game out. Because I just got through reading about it. And more, I didn't, some of the stuff that was contained within that game is, is one of the, one of the greatest shows. It could be, I, I'm just throwing it out there, Jeff, maybe you can, have, it could be one of the greatest uh, performances ever in NBA history in a regular season game, not, not that people haven't scored more points, but the drama that was right. involved and the stuff he was doing, uh, dunking on total and, and throwing one in from falling out of bounds at the end of a period and making 13 straight points when the game got down on the line. I mean, holy, this, this guy's for real, folks. It's funny because 
again, you know, he, he was kind of an obscurity till his final year at Murray state, right? <laughs> Mid-major recruit. Nobody really knew much about him. I remember I was the first one who I think interviewed him nationally. Um, the year he came out of Murray state, the, the mm-hmm. breakout year he had, and we're trying to come up with kind of comps for John Morant coming out of Murray state. And I'm like, there really, there isn't one because here's the difference, even with he and Iverson, I think he, he's, he's freakish athletically. We knew that, right. He's not a great shooter, but he can make shots from deep kind of like Luca, right. They're not great shooters, but they can both make them when needed and they kind of make them in crunch time when it matters. But to me, the difference is he's also got the, the court vision and the passing ability. Yeah. That, that was the thing. Like he had Derek Rose, Russell Westbrook explosiveness with Mike, to me, Mike Conley court vision and passing ability. That's AI it. didn't have that. That's a, no, AI, AI, AI was a, a, a undersized two guard masquerading as a point guard. Right. He was a, a point guard. guard. He was a scoring guard, AI. I'm not d- diminishing anything. I'm just saying he, yeah. he overcame his, his size, That's you right. know, to do what he did and, yes. and the way he did it. Right. This is not the same, but this is still the frame of reference. I'm just throwing in there for the, you know, for the, the numbers that are being put up in explosiveness. No, I'm, I'm, I, I agree. Uh, he, he is, it's, it's, and now the question you raise, but I think the inference that uh, you raised, Gary is okay. Is he a winning ball player? Well, they're 43 and 20 as we speak. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're on their yeah, way. He have, is. They're on their way to having the best record in franchise history, which, by the way, is 56 wins. Is he so, going to win a title in Memphis, or is he going to have to go out? <laughs> well, he needs no, more help. I mean, he's not doing it alone. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, no, I'm not knocking the guy. I don't want to. Like, like I would love water. to see him win a title in Memphis. I, I would love to see Beale Street be on be lit up Fire. with an NBA yeah. title. You know, but I'm not diminishing that. I guess, but like, I always look at these guys like in Memphis. I'm like. You know, are we going to see him with the Knicks? Are we going to see him with the Lakers? Are we going to see him with the I know, Miami? you're right, but I don't want to go there today with that. I want to just... Uh, that, I mean, they got to add another dude with him. they got to find a way sure. to get a free agent to Memphis, which is not easy to do, oh. basically because of John Morant, because they want to play with John Morant. And again, not... Generally, it's not going to happen. It's almost like you got to get a kid from Memphis to go back right. home or something like that, you know, and, and I don't know. And we invent himself, you know, and uh, you know, take off 25 years. But um, by the way, based on the reaction of his teammates for the game the other night, he seems to be well-liked. I mean, oh. he's a guy you want to play with. He's uh, awesome. They, they I were, mean, I've only dealt they, with him a handful they were of times. Over the moon for this guy. Yeah. To get the 50. Yeah. Okay. So now we talk about job. Bob raised this thing, you know, Zion who, right. And, and, and Jeff, let's start with you because, Zion was the overall favorite to be the number one pick. And I was with you, man, this kid out of Murray state. Now I'm not going to say that I was as adamant as you, but about, about job, but I remember seeing him in college and I was like, this kid's going to be great. You know, and then Zion is, well, he's got issues. Well, th- my biggest worry has kind of come to fruition with Zion. Like, how is he going to carry all that weight? Like everybody was worried about that was, right. you know, and, and I saw him when he got hurt balloon up in high school guys he ballooned so I was worried about that part he just seemingly was always hurt and and the biggest thing I go back to is like all right point guard play point guard play it's always the most important position on the court and if you have a guy like Ja who apparently has no holes in his game because again the court vision the passing ability with the athleticism we just haven't seen a guy like this that that's where I felt like John ja Morant was going to be more valuable and, and fit today's NBA better than a Zion Williamson, who, again, is not a great perimeter shooter. So, and remember, at that time, he was also, when he was drafted, it was with Lonzo Ball. And I'm saying to myself, like, well, Lonzo and Zion playing together, the spacing isn't really going to work. Yeah, the lobs are going to work. But Lonzo, at that point, wasn't a great shooter. Zion's not a great shooter. But the biggest concern was health and injuries. And unfortunately, because I, I love Zion, and I still can't believe all the stuff that has come out about Zion, J.J. Redick taking a shot at yeah. his fellow Dookie and yeah, basically my- saying he's not engaged with his teammates. It surprises me because I'll tell you what, at Duke, man, they love this kid because he was he was one of them. He, he didn't put himself above anybody. He didn't want the attention. 
So this really, really surprises me almost to the point, Bob, where I feel like somebody is in his ear telling him what to do and what not to do. Yeah, I don't know. Of course, I know you, you've encountered him personally. I have not. I, I, but when I read that thing from Reddick and when I read the, the implication that <laughs> the idea he's been disengaged and he's not, yeah. you know, and, and, and that's not good. I mean, uh, but I mean, I it's just such a redundancy to point out that the weight thing and, and the body shape was very was very precarious. It was all, it was always the big what if with him was going to be that bodies like that. I can give you historically they they don't last in this league too long. Whether you're talking about tractor trailer, you're going all the way back to, to Leonard Gray, who was a you know, there's a name people today don't know. But let me tell you something. Leonard Gray was a force for a couple of years until he wasn't. He ate himself out of the NBA. <laughs> Oliver Miller, who was a damn good basketball player, smart basketball player, ate himself out of the NBA. (laughs) So it happens. Those bodies aren't really NBA, you know, uh, standard issue. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Bob, this week, uh, Jeff is going to be down with Coach K. But I want to start with you. When did you, because this is his last, you know, it's, this is the the swan song from Mike Krzyzewski. Right. Did you know him at Army? When did you first encounter him? No, my first encountered him uh, at at Duke, and my and my initial encounter was very pleasant. Uh, it was uh, after uh, in 86 season, I believe it was. Yeah, the year they went to the finals, which one of my favorite teams of all time, by the way, the eighty five eighty six Duke team. So, in, in December of eighty five, they had a, a now. And I'm, I'm doing this off the top of my head, so I hope I'm right about it. But I'm pretty sure about it. They had a wonderful game in Madison Square Garden against Kansas. And, and I spoke with him after the game. And uh, as a result of that, I wrote, uh, no, I had written something anyway. Anyway, he complimented me about something I had written. So naturally, flattery is very, you know, seductive, actually. You know. <laughs> and, and then I've had a couple of encounters with him over the years. One time, BC was playing down there uh, at Duke uh, when I was still working. And I went down a, a day or so early, and I got an audience. And he gave me a good audience, you know. And... Um, uh, and then I, I, I got him after this. I actually kept score of the, the Kentucky game on the really? course sheet that you get. I've got it. And he signed it for me and I, I need to get uh, Hill and Leighton or two, but I got, I got, I got ships. Anyway, my encounters have been very pleasant with him. Now I know, you know, the general prevailing wisdom and I know how he can be. And he has evolved into an emperor. He's an emperor down there. And, and he's more important than anybody in the school including the school president has been and, and his influence is enormous yes. and I know how he can be, but I, I and so I'm not going to ignore that, but I have to say he's always treated me well. Yeah. How, how many times have you been to Cameron, Bob? I'd say one, two, about four. Yeah. One of them was, was I was there tonight. Bias dropped 40 on him, Jeff. Were you really? I was wow. there that night. And I, what I don't know is why the hell I was there that night. You know, I'm still covering the stuff. I don't know what I, I know. The first time I went there, it was because Harvard was playing there. Really? And and that's when they were recruiting Danny Furry. And yep. Pete Wilby was coaching at Harvard. And I went down to do the story. And there and, and it was so funny. The kids, Bobby Furry, you know, Jr. was to start one of the, the best player on Harvard at that time. And uh, the crowd was chanting, we want your brother. We want your brother. <laughs> And, and they got their bro- I got his brother. But um, and then I was there for a couple of BC games and I was there for that uh, that Len Bias. I was there when he dropped 40 on him. So, yeah, that, that been a while, though. That, that goes yeah. back, obviously, 30 years. But I had that. So I've been here a long time. I, I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, oh, it's going to be, be I mean, it's going to be cool. I mean, the, the ticket <laughs> prices are anywhere between I think it's about three grand to just get in the in the building. Yeah. Uh, to I think upwards of you know I've I've seen eighty grand I don't know if eighty I heard grand. that figure I, yeah. I mean I don't know we know who knows uh, the people have done it maybe a lot of people listening to us don't really realize the camera and only seats nine thousand plus that's the key. right and they have yes. resisted over the years any any entreaty to build a bigger. They want, they Got like love. the atmosphere. Yeah. They want to preserve Cameron as such Cameron crazies, all that. And, and so let, let Carolina build the Dean dome at 20 thou. They, right. they stuck. So, you know, they've stuck with this and it was built 1941. <laughs> Cameron, it's I know It's got that. the look Gary of like, you know, a bigger, obviously not a high school gym, yeah, but, no. but some of that character sure. to it yep. and walking up, 
you know, it, it's just you 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 feel like like Kansas, like college basketball. You just feel it there, right. and it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be like seventy five degrees this weekend. Uh, I'm getting in tomorrow. Kay's doing his press conference. I, I feel like I, I'm pretty sure every former Duke player has been that the K has coached has been invited uh, back for this game. A lot of them obviously won't be able to, you know, some are coaching some are you know, the Jeff Capels of the world, the Greg Paulus's of the world yeah. um, probably can't but, make it because, you know, Chris Collins, uh, but I think you're going to see royalty. Talking Bobby Hurley's coaching, but you, you know, Leitner should be back. You would think, I mean, it should be a very, very cool environment. Um, you know, my, my relationship with Kay a little different than yours. I it was, uh, yeah, it was hot and cold throughout our, you know, it's funny when I broke in doing this 20 or some odd years ago, Bob, you know, I broke in at 30 ish. Yeah. You know, I was doing recruiting. Then I did college and I break in at 30 and I'm like, you know what? At that point, Kay is 55. And I'm saying to myself, why am I'm not even going to bother trying to have relationships with, with the K's, the Bayheims, the Roy's, because they're getting older and like, they're not going to pay any attention to me. I'm, I'm some kid here. Who's just trying to break in the sport, right? Like I'm not even, and then as it turns out, like you have relationships with all these guys. I, I just, I guess I've, I've been able to, to make it in this industry long enough that I've had them. And I'm, I've, I've tried to be very um, real with my opinions. So like, I'll give you one example of when we kind of, not had it out, but we, we had a little bit of a tiff in Vegas. He comes up to me and he's upset at me because I had said on TV at ESPN um, that Kay had a major recruiting advantage by coaching the Olympic team. And he utilized it. Yeah. And, and he came up to me and, and kind of was denying it. And I just said to him, I said, and I don't call him coach. I, like, maybe I should, Bob. No, you <laughs> shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. I you call I friend. call every – the only guy I've ever called coach is Lute Olson because I was a student at Arizona. It, it, just, it felt different with Lute. But everybody else, like, I'm not calling Mike Krzyzewski. It's not my co- – not – Lute Olson wasn't my coach either, but I, that was just different for me. So, anyway, I, I, I went up to him and I was just like, hey, Mike, like, here's the deal. I – I knew what you were doing. I knew how you brought players over to meet Kevin Durant at national team practice. I knew that you had hour long meetings with Austin rivers when he was playing for the USA national, you know, junior team. So like, don't try to bullshit me. I know what was going on there. And I told them that I said, listen, you want a title with, with Jaleel Okafor, Justice Winslow and Tyus Jones, they all played for, for the, the, in, within the USA system. So like, come on, man. Like just, you earned it. I'm not yeah. saying, listen, you earned the ability to coach that Olympic team and take advantage of that in recruiting. Don't deny it. Embrace Who it. Who wouldn't? Exactly. It's absolutely foolish. You, of course. No, that, 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 you, the word for that is disingenuous. I hate, and that's the thing I hate as much as anything that we encounter yeah. in our business. You know, I always remember the king of indi- di- disingenuity was Bill Parcells when I dealt with him. Really? And, and yeah, and, and that's the word. that it, they, they, yeah. Come and stop insulting my intelligence. Exactly. Right. The more I got right. in the business, right. the more right. I got resentful a bit about certain things. And this is what you're talking about. You're insulting our, that, the, the deny it. Yeah. And then the, not to say, hey, why shouldn't I? The, right. To say, hey, hey, hey no, 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 I want that. Um, yeah, I... I He's One thing I want to ask you, though, I want to, I want to ask you about um, Kay, and then we, I know, Bob, we're going to get to Will. Yeah. But, um, he's a disciple of Bobby Knight, right, through Army. And the thing that always amazed me about Krzyzewski, which is I think this is what you have to do now when you're a coach. I mean, Krzyzewski, from what I understand, when dealing with players, can be a real – he can be a hard – Oh, yeah, I mean, hell I mean, yeah. I mean, he can be, he can be tough. But when you meet him or the, the public persona of him, like on the court, he can be a Bobby Knight. But like the persona of him publicly was never that. Well, he does you know? this right when he when he's MFing any player or, or a ref, he's doing this. <laughs> so, so nobody can see what he's saying. Always. Yeah. I mean, they have. Think about this. I don't know if you've ever seen this, Gary, but behind the bench, 
they have like their managers are told to put up like towels or or like a blanket so you can't see into their huddle a lot of times. So like there's all sorts of things that they're doing to protect Coach K and his image. And he likes to hold himself uh, the image up that he is above all this to start with. I even heard the most recent thing I heard yesterday or the day before, which is talking about, you know, in our house, we have no reference to basketball in our house. There's no trophies. I'm just saying he said this. We got no reference, you know, because obviously the inference is being, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just a teacher. I'm just a faculty right. member. I'm just a, a guy, you know, and I, I have a complete divorce from that. It doesn't define who I really am. This coach K thing. Oh, you know, really? All right. Okay. You know, but he's always tried to do that. And, and, and as I, you know, it now having said this, the fact is he's a phenomenal coach. The fact is that there was nobody has ever been more equipped to be that Olympic coach in terms of being able to relate to the younger players and the older players. Larry Brown, you know, was, was a, a disaster as an Olympic coach because he, he wouldn't acknowledge the kids. And, right. and one of them was called LeBron James. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, Coach K has an ability to, to transcend the barrier, the boundaries of, of, of basketball as much as, and he was the ideal selection. You know, that Jerry Colangelo that absolutely found the right guy to do that job. That they may never find a better one. Frankly. Nope. Nope. All right, Bob, uh, Will Chamberlain's 60th anniversary. Yep. We're not going to joke that you were in Hershey, Pennsylvania in 1962. If only. I, I was I, in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Uh, that was my, um, let's see, fifth, nine, my, my uh, sophomore year on the JV team. So, uh, yeah. That, uh, but, uh, it, it's just, I mean, in all sport, right? How many things are this singular that, that, you know, that you can point to as, as defining somebody as Will Chamberlain's hundred point game? Sure. Ed Williams batting 400. <laughs> no, yeah. 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 Williams, that's World six, it's, yeah. It's, right. it's Russell 11 titles, right? One, 11 for other. one act. Well, for one act. Yeah. yeah for one yeah. game. Breaking out twenty by Clemens. Nothing, maybe yeah, order. right. Exactly. That those are some of the examples, yeah. but none of them come close to Will scoring a hundred. In basketball, yeah, I don't know of another one. I mean, I think you have to say Will getting a hundred is like the one that you think of. Yeah, and the idea, you know, that it was in Hershey, Pennsylvania, where they used to play. I went there once, guys. The Celtics played there as late as the seventy one seventy two season. And as a matter of fact, in the seventy one seventy two season, fifty years ago, they clinched their division their first post-Russell division in Hershey oh, wow. against the 76ers. And Billy Cunningham, who's one of my all-time favorite guys in, the his, in this game, came in to congratulate them in the locker room. And, and really? I'll never forget that. Yes, he did. Anyway, guys, uh, you know, the, 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 there's this game. <coughs> Will, the, I, I tweeted this this morning. and of all, uh, He took 63 shots. He was 36 for 63. In a 48-minute game, you just, uh, wouldn't you love to see it? Wouldn't you like to have, just sit down at night and watch? You think he just yelled at his teammates, like, get me the ball every time? Like, how do you think well, that worked with, with his teammates? Well, Guy Rogers had 20 assists in this game. You know, the, the Knicks, by the way, had 17 assists and 57 baskets. So they weren't exactly sharing the ball too much that night. But uh, um, but the thing that the reason he made that got the 100 is the aberrational night he had the free throw line. Right. He was a 51% career shooter. I looked it up. But this year, guys... <laughs> It, he, he shot 60%, 606 for the year. And the only time he even came close to that. And he got worse as years go on, by the way. So you think he might have gotten better? He got worse. So some of his lowest averages were in his final four years, and three or four years in the league. He was so in the 40s? Point, you know, that, that, when he was going back and forth between shooting underhand and, and, and throwing darts, which is what I would call what he did when he <laughs> shot it overhand. That is, he looked like he was a dart player in a British pub, you know. But um, <clears throat> he was 28 for 32 from the line that night. Wow. Wow. And that, that made the difference. Yeah. You know, there's no <laughs> accounting for that. And now the other thing that's interesting about this game, Al Adels went eight for eight, <laughs> by the way, from the Knicks, but it's out for the uh, 76ers. But not the 76ers, they were the Warriors. This is their last year in Philadelphia before they moved to San Francisco. Three Knicks had 30. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Including the immortal Cleveland Buckner. And we wouldn't even remember him for anything mm. other than this night when he had 33 points in his career high. Anyway, 169, 147. And, and, um, and then, of course, you know, the story after the game, this is the gospel truth. Wilt drove back to his house 
which was in New York City with one of the Knicks. I forget which one. I think it was Knowles, Willie Knowles, pretty sure. Wilt, Wilt drove back. He, he didn't travel with the team. Wilt drove back to New York City from Hershey, Pennsylvania. <laughs> That's funny. Well, you always love the stories. Like in Austin, <laughs> Wilt used to sleep over Russell's house, right? They, well, they would, <clears throat> excuse me, they often uh, had dinner and all. in the beginning, in the first few years, they were very social. Yeah. I don't know how long that lasted. And then, it, and, and then they had a falling out after 69 and after the game seven, when, when Russell criticized Will for leaving the game. And then they, they patched it up in later years when, you know, by the time, you know, Will died, they had been friendly for years. No, um, the, he, he did that. I wouldn't say it was regular Gary, but, I, but they did, he did have dinner at, at Russell's and I mean, he may have stayed over a few times. Yeah. Anyway, a different, it, it, a different it's world. The anniversary of, of it. 169-147. Bob, we love you, man. That's great stuff. Uh, Jeff Goodman, we'll talk to you next week. And yeah, we'll talk after the uh, Coach K game. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll recap it. Coach K gives you a little kiss on the cheek. Yeah, you know? I, I don't. I don't think it'll happen. <laughs> All right, we'll see you later, guys.